Hey guys, welcome to Planet Sue and welcome to what is kind of a different sort of video than what you'd normally see from me. Today I'm doing a speed build. Now I don't normally do speed builds and basically that's because I tend to just build in my spare time and I never bother hitting that record button usually. But today I thought I'm going to try something different because this is a nice, very easy build and it's the sort of thing I'd like to show you how you can replicate this yourself. Today I'm building a combo habitat. So it's a habitat for the meerkats and it's also a habitat for the fennec fox. Both of these animals are quite similar in the requirements they have and the room they need. And I thought, oh, that would be quite nice to have that in one build building so on one side you've got the fennex and on one side you've got the meerkats also yes they're both walk through habitats as well so the guests can go through the gates and i thought that would be really good to put them together so here is how i'm building the combo habitat once i was happy with where the pathing was looking i started on the roofing now i'm using my starter habitat series the fennec fox and the meerkat habitats that i did for that as a guide for how big the habitat should be and also how big the hard shelter should be as well so that it covers their needs so there's a little bit of fiddling here where i'm kind of looking at the roof size and i already made it way too big even for both of the animals combined so there's a little bit of roofing going on here where i'm reducing it down and making sure that it's a good size not too big not too small for this sort of combo inside area that i'm making with the roof of the hard shelter done i moved on to the outside area so this is putting in the path in where guests will come through and they will look at the animals from the outside portion i wanted this to be symmetrical on both sides so that you could see it was part of the same building even though it's two individual habitats in reality now this is something i struggle with all the time i i'm just not very good at maths and it seems that you need to be good at maths to get the symmetry right so for me what i do is i use shapes and um use the the trick where you create a circle out of some pieces and i use that to make these sort of curves and things and i use that quite often now in when i'm building habitats and making the shape of the habitat if it's not a square or a rectangle using shapes like this to just put the edges in and make sure it's nice and smooth i think that works better than either doing it by hand or i mean if you're a maths wizard i guess you can probably just use the angles um that come in the the advanced tools to do that yourself but I personally can't do that. I just don't have the skill to do it. So using templates like this to map out where you want the edges to be, it, it seems to work for me. So yeah, here I've got a template in place on the floor and I've created a custom barrier that I'm just copying around the edge of the, where I want the habitat to be. And that follows very nicely along that template on the floor. Right, I've skipped ahead a little bit so that the curve section of the barrier is complete which means I can get rid of the template on the floor now because we're not going to need that again and just sorting out this little bit at the front so that it makes sure that it's all lined up. Next part of the build is creating the custom fence inside the habitat because I like to keep the guests separate from the animals completely. You don't have to do that because it's not a requirement of the builds. The animals are quite happy if you've got just a path in there and people are running about. I personally prefer to keep a barrier between the animals and the humans and actually for this build it works out really well because it means if I've got a barrier there I can have the two habitats right next to each other and just put a null barrier in between and that's how it works as a combo habitat using the same building. If I didn't have this space blocked off between the two habitats then this wouldn't work as a combo habitat because the animals would be able to go right up to the null barrier and that means you're just going to get constant alerts for the animals saying they've escaped even though they haven't. Trust me, it's better to have this gap in between. For the grass verge in the middle, which is kind of like a no man's land between the two habitats, I've put down some plaster pieces here to cover that up and this is kind of the style that I'm going for for this whole habitat really. It's nice and light and airy and a lot of plaster used. I've also used a new mesh panel in here so it's got another barrier right in the middle and that means if an animal did escape from one side of the habitat they you know if they jumped over this small fence they're not going to get through to the other side of the habitat this way again not like it's needed it just adds a little bit of realism 
The next section of the build was to extend the fencing all the way around the two habitats. So what I really tried to do with this one is to make custom barriers so that I could use the null barrier all the way around the habitats and that helps with the combo habitat. If I was to use normal fencing all around here, it just doesn't work as well as having a null barrier. Next up, I moved onto the wall of the hard shelter. And for this, I made a custom wall. This is made out of the new plaster blocks that we've got and also the base plaster walls that we've had in the game for a long time. I really wanted to play around with the new plaster blocks and create like a half wall in plaster in this nice beige color because both of these animals are desert animals. Well, I think the meerkat is desert and grassland, but the fennec fox is exclusively in the desert. So I wanted some sort of sandstony type beigey colored wall in here. Using the blocks as a half wall adds a little bit of depth to the to the wall. And I like the break in the color. So you've got the sandstone, then you've got a nice whitewash and that works well with the brown tiles of the roof. So it, it's just little bits like that kind of add to your habitats a little bit, gives them a bit more character than say having a solid color on the wall that goes straight to the tile and roof. What I also like to do with my shelters is to have some angles in there. So instead of it just being a rectangle block, what I'll do is I'll have it go diagonal for a little bit at the corners. And that creates a little overhang that you can put um, some posts next to. So you've got a bit of outdoor shelter rather than always being indoor. The wooden planks I'm putting in here, this is kind of, it's not really necessary for what I'm trying to express with the style of the building, but it's more for realism. This is mimicking what would be the soffit of the roofing. So that's where you connect the roof to the building and it helps protect that joint against rain and the elements. So I don't know, I just can't help myself sometimes with the realism. I've only put that in because it's kind of, it would be weird not to have it there. The other feature of the hard shelter for these habitats is the access doors. So you've got the habitat gate at the back and that's the main habitat gate where the animals are dropped in by the staff. Then you've got the other habitat gate which is the guest entrance and that's the big double doors at the front. Then I've also got these little gaps in the wall. So the little one is obviously where the animals are meant to run through. And then we've got the big one, which is where the keepers will come through to clean up in the hard shelter and whatnot. Something that bugs me about Planet Zoo is the fact that all of the animals have quite a big hitbox around them. So that's why these the little animal gates here are so big because literally if you make it any smaller than this, the little animals, even the tiny ones like the fennec fox and the meerkat are quite tiny animals. And in real life, they'd be quite happy just passing through, you know, maybe a pipe or a very tiny gap would be needed for them to get through. But in this game, unfortunately, you can't mimic that. They need a good solid piece of space to get through, kind of like how big this one is. So really, I could have got away with just having the human door here and just scrapping the animal door, but I wanted to give it a bit of, just get again going with that realism to, to show that the animals do have their own entrance and exit way here. Oh, what I've also done with this, I've kept the entrance and exits for the animals away from where the guests will be viewing them. So that's again quite realistic to life that you'd want the animals to feel safe and secure when they're moving from the hard shelter to outside, not where there's guests gawping at them, I guess. So that's there for the animals comfort and, you know, hopefully it helps them, helps them not get stressed as much as it would if that entrance was facing towards the guests. As an afterthought, I put this panel in, which is one of the African sticks panels around the inside of the breeze block wall. So I've got quite the fancy fencing at the front, which is where the guests are going to view. At the back, you don't need it that fancy, so it's just a breeze block wall. But also to break up that grey space, because it does look very grey, I've got the African sticks here to give that more depth. Next up, I started to add the null barrier in and also started adding details to the inside of the habitat. So this is where you're going to have guests coming through one big main entrance into the into the hard shelter, as it were. And this is like the defined space in the middle. 
where you can either you can go right and look at the Fenix or you can go left and look at the meerkats or the other way around I always get my left and my right mixed up unfortunately inside here I've continued to use that plaster block to have the half wall so it's kind of making some space from outside become inside and it's nice as well that you can see the inside of that wall in from the inside of the habitat as well. What I wanted to create here was a very natural looking fennec fox and meerkat inside space. So both the fennec fox and the meerkat, they burrow into the ground and create burrows that they live in. And it should be a little bit more contained and snug for them in here, but unfortunately the game won't let you do that. So what I've got instead is I'm trying to create like a natural cave type burrow. So I've still got the plaster walls that go around the edge and they're there to support the structure of the hard shelter. Then I've gone with glass wall pieces. Now, I know that the game has added that you can add one-way glass as part of the construction pieces rather than having it as a barrier. That's really nice, but I figured for now I was just using the glass piece so that I can see both sides and see how that looks. I guess if the animals were getting nervous once you put animals in there and guess, then you could easily change this glass out for one-way glass. So this is where I'm making the animals den or burrow, the, the basically the sleeping quarters as it were. And I've separated this out a little bit, so I've got more of the new mesh panels in here. And this is creating a little bit of space where the keepers would maybe stand and they've got availability to lock the animals into the cages at night, maybe. I'm not entirely sure how that would work, whether that's realistic or not, but it feels more realistic to have a bit of space here. I feel like the animals would feel more at home with that. Now, I was a little backwards in how I created this habitat. So I essentially started at the back and then worked my way forward to the front. So this is the front of the habitat where it's a combined entrance. I have brought this out ever so slightly so that you've got a little bit of an angle away from the main breeze block wall there. And I've added some detail here. So we've got some of the African windows in, which are the boarded up windows and they work quite well with the half plaster wall and the whitewash wall there. Next, I'm using the blocks again to create this big open double door entrance. And what I've done is I've used some of the glass pieces again. Now, where the glass is here, guests are gonna walk through that because guests just ignore stuff on the paths. If there's a construction piece in their way, Unlike the staff and the animals, they don't path around it. They just walk straight through it. So unfortunately, guests are going to walk through this unless I put a bin in front of or behind the door, which is always an option, I guess. But I, I felt it was too open. I like the idea of having this big, nice wide path here. And it's too difficult to get the path to like squeeze down to one block and then go to like two wide when you get into here. So I figured... Screw that, we're just gonna put some glass doorway barriers here and you can just make believe that guests would walk around it, I guess. With the inside of the shelters pretty much done, this is where I started on the barriers again. So I've added the proper gaps in the breeze block walls. This is where the habitat gates are gonna go. And it's a little tricky, but you can get it so that the gates will sit just outside of those walls so that it's included in the blueprint. Then it's a case of having the null barrier go all the way around the habitat. Next, I added a bit of decoration inside the hard shelter, the bit where the guests are going to walk through. And I used the new statues for the meerkat and the fennec fox which in their natural color, you can change these to any color you want, but in their natural color, the sandstone type color, it works really well with the, the color scheme I already had going. A part of the build that I'd ignored up to this point is the upper section of the roof. So this is something that I've used quite a lot in some of my habitat builds, and it's two roofs put into one. So you've got the lower roof and then you've got the skylight type roof. And it's really great for adding some light into your hard shelters, especially if you've got guests walking through here. You really don't want it really dark and dingy for them. So for this, I've mixed it up a bit. I've got some wood paneling, 
um, some of the wooden boards, the glass piece obviously, and the plaster panels of course too. The good thing about this build, I suppose because of the Fennec Fox and the Meerkat, they do like living in burrows, it's letting light in for the guests, but because I've got those rocks that go right over the top of their sleeping space, they're not going to be bothered by the light. This is more for letting some ventilation through, letting some light through for that guest pathway through. Best of both worlds, really. Next part of the build is the really fun bit, and that's filling the outside space with the fauna, flora, the rocks, changing the terrain, adding the enrichment items, everything like that. I do love doing this bit of the build and it's great now that we've got we've got more trees and things that we can use with the desert animals. The new Africa Pack DLC has added a heap of plants and things whereas before we really didn't have that much that you could use in a desert scenario with Africa. We was always stuck using blooming elephant grass and a couple of dead trees but now we've got some lovely grasses we've got some lovely bushes and there's some really nice trees as well that have been added now to keep the habitats uniform i've still only used the desert theme things in the meerkat habitat as well as the fennec fox because only the fennec fox could only use desert and i didn't want it to look odd so that on one side you've got savanna and desert and then on the fennec fox side you've only got desert Seeing as the meerkat doesn't really care which one you use, as long as you're using only those types, I figured that'd be okay, and it looks a lot better that way. I've also kind of just mirrored for both of the habitats. I've used rocks and stuff on one side, and then mirrored that, kind of turning it around and doing it the opposite way in the other habitat, so that, that you've got a nice symmetrical space outside. It's really nice how, because the fennec fox and the meerkat, they both require similar kind of space for both inside and outside. So it's great how symmetrical I've been able to make this. And that's basically how you can make a combined habitat for animals that can be housed in generally the same vicinity as each other, but don't go together where you have animals that can live in the same habitat. So hopefully here where you can see it, I've got that defined split in the middle. That shows you how you can have two habitats very close to each other. It's just a case of playing with the barriers. Now I have added this build to the steam workshop so you can take a look at it yourself however and that's a big however because you can only upload one habitat at a time to steam unfortunately there's no function where you can have two habitats merged together in this way on the workshop unless you uploaded it as a whole zoo which i think is a bit silly for something this small with that in mind i've had to delete the null barrier in the middle of this build so that it's all counted as one all the way around it and I've also had to delete the habitat gate from the fennec fox side. So this is just open. And to get this working as the combo habitat, if you did download it, you'd need to put in the null barrier again between the two habitats in that no man's land in the middle. And you'd also have to put another habitat gate back in here over in the fennec fox habitat. So yeah, a little bit of work with that one. So honestly, I won't be offended if nobody wants to download that one. This was more of an experiment video going into detail of how I put together a habitat like this and how you can get a little bit creative, even if you're building something that's quite simple with just a little bit of attention to where your barriers are going and where the gates are. You can make something quite nice that doesn't have to be 10,000 pieces worth of building and construction. So that's it today. I hope you liked the build. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.